What up? What up? What up? It's your boy B. Hey, I got them tight eyes, baby. Um, what's today? Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to everybody. I wanted to uh, do this video. I was talking to a couple friends today about wholesaling and you know what it did for me and my family. Um, I think we got the wholesaling. 2014-ish, um, 2014, so started wholesaling about four or five years ago, and um, so I wanted to do this message to tell you guys, so uh, many people know about, you know, we experienced massive success, I guess you can call it that, in wholesaling, but we went through months of $100,000, most months, and um, and the biggest thing about making $100,000 a month wholesaling is a lot of people, you know, we, we sell hundreds of courses each quarter, you know, to people who learn it. Some do it, some don't. But uh, the wholesaling aspect of it, I want, I, here's the thing I would say, I want to let you know uh, what I was able to do with wholesaling and why it wasn't hard to me. And I want to make sure that you understand this because many people that start wholesaling, let me turn down Tupac in the background, Tupac. But uh, many people that start wholesaling, typically, they're doing it for the money. And, you know, when I say they're doing it for the money, the end goal is the money. And so that that's the differentiator. Like, my end goal was the use of the money that I wanted. And I'll tell you a quick story. So um, many of you know this. Like, back in 2008, in the crash, I lost a massive portfolio. We had over 100 properties. I was 27, 28 years old. And I had a rental portfolio, and I lost a lot of those properties uh, due to foreclosure. I, I let everything go. Pretty much mo most people did in that scenario. And um, so my biggest thing was I felt at the time that I lost the properties to, you know, over leveraging um, on debt. But that wasn't the case. Um, my mindset had shifted to a, a, a mindset of lack and uh, self-accountability, understanding that you create your own reality. Um, I shifted from abundance to lack. And so understanding visualization and all those things, I shifted back. So, but I I wanted to set a goal. When I found out about wholesaling, wholesaling, I would say, is for the person who is on a lower level of finances and he needs, you know, a come up. So wholesaling was not my I didn't want to do it for the money like so that I could live a lavish lifestyle that wasn't what I did wholesaling for so and I'm gonna say if that's the reason why you're doing wholesaling it's going to be very 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 hard my reason for wholesaling was because I knew that I couldn't go to a bank at the time and I knew that I couldn't get loans right to literally shift back up to my massive portfolio that I had so I came up with the plan okay so I wanted my 100 property portfolio back and I needed, you know, let's just say the average cost of a property at the time, I was buying property for five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 and um, in the Memphis area and this is before we inflated the market, right, and, and everybody's buying the same type of properties for sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 now, right? Uh, so thank you everybody who's winning, you know, you're welcome, right? <laughs> we had a lot of fun doing that. But the biggest thing is, so... I knew I needed five, ten thousand dollars to buy a property, and then another ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars to fix it up. So that will put me right at about forty thousand dollars that I needed. So I needed a hundred properties. Again, that will put me at about four million dollars. So my goal that I wrote down was four million dollars. I needed four million dollars from wholesaling. So I wanted to do that over a year's time. So four million dollars came out to roughly about uh, three hundred thousand dollars a month and some change. Um, so if I stretch that out over two years, that would be $2 million a year. That would put me right at about, you know, $150,000, a little over $150,000 a month. So now once I established my goal, then I, you know, started, started to work backwards. I knew that I divided that number by 12. Um, and that gave me, you know, the $150,000 or so. So really, yeah, I did over $100,000 a month, but I was really short of my goal. So a lot of people don't know that though. Like I really, it was a huge failure, you know, like I wanted to make, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars a month and I was only, you know, up to a hundred thousand dollars. So I shot so high. Right. And so here's the thing. So as I was going about it, here's the thing that I started to do. 
as I was going about it, here's what I started to do. I started to, once again, I, they call it reverse engineering. I, I divided it by 12, came up with $150,000. Then I divided it by 20 days a week. So once I had my goal, divided by 12, I divided it by, you know, four weeks, right? And so, um, and then I divided it by, you know, uh, five days. I was only going to work five days a week. Everybody know I cut it off on the weekends. I'm not working on the weekends. And so that gave me my daily amount that I needed to make. All right. So once I knew my daily amount that I needed to make, I know that I couldn't make a seller. <clears throat> Here's the reality. I knew that I couldn't make a seller sell me their house. Right. But what I did know is that if I found a pool of buyers, so I started to do relentless marketing, like my marketing. Many people don't know this, but what I teach in the wholesalers blueprint dot com is, is, is visualization, but it's more about marketing. Like a lot of people really underestimate the power of marketing. Like if I'm, if I have a business and business is good, I'm going to market my ass off. If I have a business and business is slow, I'm going to market even harder. Like my last dollars are going to go into marketing. And a lot of people, they stop putting money into marketing when shit gets tight. And so instead of doing that, I would dump marketing, my money into marketing and just really ramp it up. And when I say dump my money into marketing, I um, when I first started, of course, I didn't have a lot to start with. So as it grew, what I started doing was I, I hired VAs, you know, um, and I had I taught them my manual marketing techniques. See, I have like I, Darius knows this. Like I, I market well, mainly all of my students. I market over a hundred different mediums, online, offline, and I was doing that shit manually. It's almost like you know I was insane with it because I knew that I would create the buzz, the volume around the world, create the buyer pools, and once I had the buyers and knew what they wanted, then what I would do is I knew I had to talk to X amount of sellers a day or prospect X amount of sellers a day. So I would prospect anywhere between 50 to 100 sellers a day. I would prospect between 50 to 100 sellers a day. And a lot of people say, man, how the hell did you do that? I have various free mediums. And so you can't just learn one thing and think you got it. I have so many free mediums that I teach in the Wholesalers Blueprint, the wholesalersblueprint.com, to where I would go through all these mediums. And regardless if I made a sale or not, I got a, a seller to you know, agreed to give me a contract on the house. I knew that my day did not end until I had 150 prospects hit. So I didn't base my, my daily success on money. That's what I'm telling you. Like money cannot be the goal uh, for your daily activity or for what you're shooting for, because it would be very hard. My success, my daily success, my monthly success was based upon if I did this many today, then I'm going to get this result, whether it's in 30 days, whether it's in 60 days, whether it's in 90 days. Now, here's the reality as a business owner that many people won't tell you, won't talk about it, is many business owners starting out, and I myself included, um, go for broke, dude. Like, you know, my credit was fucked up, right? like a 500 some credit score, late on bills, late on house payments, late on car notes, right? Shit, sometimes I'm still late. I don't give a damn, right? My point is, is when you're making moves as an entrepreneur, when you're making moves as a business owner, one thing you got to understand is, is you can't let your day-to-day -day pressure you into making business decisions that's going to affect your future. I'm going to say that shit again. You can't let your right now situation, your broke situation, your horrible situation affect how you make moves today for future results, in, you know, in your business. And so what ended up happening is, you know, when you make those decisions or you allow people to or businesses or creditors to really breathe down your neck and say, you pay me, you're 30 days late, you're six days late. Let me tell you something. When you make that lick. In 60 days, 90 days, you can take care of all that shit, you know, in a month or two or three or four or five or six. So the moves that I make as an entrepreneur being in the game for almost 20 years, I know that if I make a move today, I make a move next week. It's not going to take me 30. Here's, here's the reality. Most people's bills are literally like three, four, five thousand dollars a month. So the reality of it is, is. The reason why I'm so confident in myself and not a job is because I know for a fact that in a 30-day time frame, if I commit, 
you know, two or three hours a day, five days a week, extreme focus. I'm going to tell you about food too, if I have time in this video, but with extreme laser focus, three hours, I can make more in that three hour time frame in a day than most jobs will pay me in a month. So I may not pull the trigger or get the cash on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, but I know in two or three weeks, I'm going to make three or four or $5,000. That, that would be my mindset early on. And so I don't have to work 40 hours a week to make that kind of money. So what am I saying? I'm saying that if you really took off your job for 30 days with, you know, and you, let's just say you schedule, you have a consultation with me, right? You, you do a consulting with me and you meet with me once a week or, you know, uh, or, or, you know, I would say four times a month. If you do a consultation with me and I give you this game plan, this plan of action, we consult with a lot of clients, like a lot of clients, and we've helped a lot of people do this. So if, if I consult with you and I give you a specific plan of action and, you know, through that plan of action, we reverse engineer it from whatever your business is, laser focus, right? Tell you something, Miss Hunter, laser freaking focus. The key to it is, is I'm going to make the money. I don't have to worry about it if my activity is done. I'm going to make it. So now as you grow, you say, okay, look, I want to go from 3000 to 5000 So you start making 10000 20000 et cetera, because you now see that if you're working for a job, here's the reality. If you're working for a job, you got to know, and there's nothing wrong with this, guys, but a job is making massive profits off of your um, efforts. That's the reality of it, right? So if you're working a job and, and you're making eight, nine, 10, $20 an hour, whatever the case may be, that job is probably making 10, 20, $30,000 off of the activity that you're doing. Typically they're making some big bucks. Now here's the thing. They're also having more expenses than just you. Whereas, you know, so you may say, man, I should be making more of this. No, because there's more that goes to this back end. I may take home, you know, 10, 20, 30, or 10, 20, a thousand dollars and may have payroll to pay out the $10,000 or whatever. And so that leaves, you know, uh, extra 20 grand for me. Um, and then I'm paying other shit, right? But the reality of it is guys is that $8 an hour, that $10 an hour that you're working, you can do it too. You can do it too. If you had the vision and put it in place and did all of the other necessary late night stuff that people don't see and you want more than $10 an hour, it's like, let me tell you something. One thing that I'm going to tell you, it's so fucking easy to be a, 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 um, a employee. You don't have to think. What an employee d gets to do is step inside of a vision and not have to worry about doing anything else, period. An employee does not have to think. I don't real I don't think you understand how much work it is to think. When you really become a thinker, like your whole world changes, your whole perception changes. And as you think, you know, you start to create more, but as an employee, you have to do this, 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 and this. Don't think about shit else. Do this, 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 and this. And so they rob you of your ability to create for yourself, to think outside of the box. When you stop thinking, you lose your ability to create. So what I've learned as a mentor, as a consultant, is that one of the biggest things that I have to do is teach people how to start thinking again. Teach people how to start creating again. Like, I didn't realize, being an entrepreneur so long, I didn't realize that people really aren't thinking. Like, like I know this sounds like, like, what do you mean? Like, but if you're not around thinkers. But being around thinkers, you will realize how much you don't think. And so, I stepped into wholesaling as a thinker. And so I put together a system and a model from a thinking perspective so that when most people step into my wholesaling course, I've taken out the need for you to have to think, but I've put in, I've, I've taken out the need for you to have to think of what to do next. But that means that now here's the key to thinking. 
the key to thinking is learning how to thinking is visualizing okay so when when you learn how to visualize so now this is what happens so in the course i teach you how to visualize how to take on and embody the spirit of that which you want to become and so now when you do that what tends to happen is you awake in your body a level a spirit that guides and that drives your body towards the end destination of where you want to go so now it's not hard to you mentally but it's really tasking on your body but once again when you start visualizing you realize that your flesh isn't controlling your body anymore it's the inner god that's guiding your body so you don't see it as work so as my my hundred thousand dollars a month the beginning of that, it didn't seem like work to me building it, okay? It didn't seem like work to me building it. So I hear you if you think wholesaling is hard. I hear you and I understand you if you think wholesaling is hard, but that's because you have lacked visualizing. You have not visualized the end intensely, repeatedly enough to where... As you're walking through, see the thing is when I when I visualize and I come out of visualization, I don't I pull out of the need to worry and I let it come. I walk in my day with confidence. I step into my day knowing that everything I need is going to be presented to me. When you operate in this level of capacity of of being a human being, then worry goes away. And you start to literally allow your inner God or inner guide to pull you or push you through. And you get to, through these windows, through these lenses, observe reality shift in front of you. You start to notice that when a person comes into your world and your arena and they're the right person at the right time, you know that you had nothing to do with it physically. There has to be an outs- a, a inner force or a greater, you know, being that's higher than you that's guiding that. So now when you do this more than enough, more than once, you begin to look through these eyes just to observe. <laughs> and you go inside to see the world. <laughs> but you go You look through these eyes to observe the how. See, the how, the how is really the fun part of being a creator. The how is not my conscious jurisdiction. Ah, good word. The how of how something is going to manifest in my world is not my conscious jurisdiction. I can leave that to my heavenly father inside of me so understanding that if i knew how it would happen what need would i need to be here if i knew the how i don't need to know the how i just need to know the end and when i know the end i get to watch the how and my friends that's the beauty of life Watching the how. Let me tell you something. How do you know what good is? How do you know what amazing is? If you haven't observed horrible or poverty. How do you know what wealth is? If you haven't experienced poverty. How do you know what good is? If you haven't experienced bad. So when I understand. That everything that's in my life. That has happened to me. When I, when I look at everything in my life that's happened to me and, it's, it, it, and it appears on the surface to be a bad thing, I understand that it's preparing my conscious mind to know what good looks like so that I can chisel my visions to perfection. And when you learn how to chisel your visions to perfection, when you learn how to take your visions and chisel them oh based on your experiences in life you now can become a better picasso 
You can become a better Michelangelo. You can become a better orchestrator of how you go into the kingdom and build your life. You understand? So now I want you as you go about your day to go about your day in such a way to where if you are controlling your day through visualization, if you are meditating day and night, taking breaks, five, five, 30 second uh, breaks, um, um, uh, uh, an hour in the morning, an hour at night, if you are doing that, then you can literally start to miraculously watch this amazing un unfoldment before your eyes and when you do this guys so now I, I visualize my my whole wholesaling career to where it took me to a place where I got all these properties now and I started you know renting them out doing the same thing I've done but now as a creator I begin to say okay now wholesaling some people say man did you quit wholesaling um or, you know, are you not, why did you quit wholesaling or, or why aren't you doing wholesaling? It's not that I quit wholesaling. It's the need for it was met. And then you grow past that. Because once again, wholesaling, the wholesalersblueprint.com, check that out. Opt in, buy the course or whatever. But wholesaling, hold on. Okay. All right. So wholesaling, is a low level entry point to real estate. Wholesaling is a low level entry point to real estate. You don't stay at the bottom, baby. You don't stay at the low level. You elevate to the next level and the next level and the next level and the next level and the next level. So you're always evolving. You understand? So wholesaling is supposed to be hard. Because it's a low level barrier of entry for the person who's starting in the mailroom as an entrepreneur in real estate. It's the low level barrier. So you got to earn your keep. You understand? You got to earn your keep on the bottom. And you earn your keep by finding properties for the people with the real bread. So now what happens is, as you start to make this money for wholesaling, from wholesaling, as you start to make this money, then what you have to also do is educate yourself. Like I said, get consulting, man. Like, what do I do with this excess? If I, if you make twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars, that's more money in a in a in a, in a deal than most people will ever see in a year's time. So when you understand that, when you make this money, this kind of lump sum money, the next thing is, guess what? You're going to blow it. It's already spent before it comes to your hand. You That's why they say the, 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 the rich, if you give money to the poor, if you give money to the poor, they'll give it right back to the rich. So what I had to learn how to do was how to allocate my funds so that I could start winning when I got this abundance in. You understand? See, I know that if you learn this stuff and you don't learn how to fully preserve it, it'll be stripped from you. So I started to allocate my funds. This is one of the things that we teach to our students and the wholesalersblueprint.com, as well as a lot of our consulting clients, how to allocate your funds, have these separate different accounts to where when you have these separate different accounts, when the money, when a dollar comes in, 10 cent goes here. Uh, 20 cents goes here, 30 cents goes here, 40 cents goes here. Here's what I'm telling you. If you don't know how to do this with money and you don't have shit, money makes you do more of what you always done. Money makes you do more of the same. If you're alcoholic, you're going to drink better liquor. If you're a drug addict, you're going to do better drugs. If you are a saver, you're going to save more. If you are an investor now, when you get money, you're going to invest more. So what am I telling you? If you're piss poor with money now and you jack it off, you're going to jack off a whole lot more money when you get it in your hand. Shit doesn't change in your life when you get more money. It makes you do more of what you've always done. So understanding that now is the time to prepare yourself for the abundance that you've been calling for, all right, in your life. 
Now is the time to prepare yourself for the abundance that you've been calling for in your life. And you do that with proper mentoring. Right. When you what are you doing with the dollars that you're making now? Are you giving your entire paycheck to your bills? Right. Are you are you giving your entire paycheck to your bills? Are you putting anything away for the future version of you that doesn't want to be in that fucking position? You understand? Like you got to think about stuff like that. You got to think that. You might live tomorrow. You might live in a month. You might live past six months, past a year. You understand? So when you understand that, you got to allocate now. You got to learn this stuff now so that when all this stuff comes in, when all this stuff comes in, who is this right here? Oh! All right, guys. I'll talk to you guys like, what's up, big time? What's up, bro? I'm on a live video right now. I'm going to come in there in just a second. Okay. So when you when you realize that you live past that, like you you got to grow past the point of where you're only thinking about now. If guess what? If you can't pay a bill right now when you get your paycheck in, as long as it's not your your main necessities, your you know, your your house, your car, etc., then guess what? I'm not telling you to be late. I'm not an uh, advocate of being late, but what I am telling you is pay yourself. Pay yourself first. You understand? <clears throat> if you ain't got it, if you ain't good, ain't nobody else going to be good. If you ain't good, ain't nobody else going to be good. If you ain't investing for you, ain't nobody else going to invest for you. If you not physically healthy, ain't nobody going to get healthy for you. What I'm saying is you got to take care of yourself first, your body, your mind, your spirit. You got to pay yourself first. And here's another thing. One thing is, so the hundred thousand dollars a month. Let's go back to that. So when I hit the hundred thousand dollars a month with wholesaling, absolutely amazing, right? But the biggest thing about it is, I only allocated for myself, my personal family, twenty five percent. So here's the thing: a lot of you all are setting your goals too low. Meaning, let's say this: if I, if you, if you are a client of mine that I'm consulting. I immediately tell you, you say, man, what's your goal? What do you want to make a month? They say 10 grand a month or whatever. So, okay, 10 grand a month. And when I show you how to allocate, 10 grand a month comes in, guess what? If you're only making 25%, you're only making $2,500 take home. So when you realize that, okay, if your goal was 10 grand a month, but your allocation to you is only 25%, $2,500, guess what? If you want to make 10 grand a month, what should your goal be? 40 grand a month. You understand? So now when you understand that your goal for your personal life, I show you how to set goals so that your business can keep living too. Your marketing can keep living too. Your um, future investments funds can keep surviving too. Your operating expenses for your business can keep living too. Your profit account can keep living too. You understand that you have to be able to blow money just as much as you are saving money. You got to have an equal balance all the way. You got to have an account that says this much goes to me just blowing money. So if I want to blow $10,000 a week, guess what? If I allocate 10% to my blow money account, my profit account is what I call it. Guess what? If I, I have, that means I have to make a hundred thousand dollars a week. If I want to blow $10,000 a week, I can't just go blow $10,000. I can't just go spend $10,000 and not expect consequences from that. So if, if, if my goal is, or if my goal was $10,000 a month and I've only allocated a thousand dollars or 10% to profit or blow money, a thousand dollars goes to blow money account, right? If I make a thousand dollars for my business in a month, guess what? You only got a hundred dollars of blow money. But this puts things into perspective. And so here's the other thing, guys. If money is the goal, if money is the goal for you and wholesaling, I'm gonna tell you something. You can do a whole lot more easier stuff to hit your whole your 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 money goal. 
what am I saying? Like, for instance, we uh, we do digital marketing services like Facebook ads. We do um, uh, online marketing and all this other stuff, right? Omnipresentagency.com. Omnipresentagency.com. Check that out. But one client from that pays us anywhere between three to $20,000. How many clients do you need to live the life that you want? at that rate. You understand? So if your expenses are $2,000 a month and you close one client, now granted, does that mean that you're not going to have to get your ass out and go got to, you know, find the clients, do marketing and get the clients ongoing all the time repeatedly? Yo, that doesn't mean that you got to do it. But if you do that repeatedly, nonstop, five hours a day, three hours a day for 30, 60, 90 days straight, you're going to get a client period. What else can you do? There's a lot of things you could do. I mean, you know, from whatever your passion is, man, it's like you don't have to be the number one person in this economy anymore to live a lavish lifestyle with a steady, dependable income. You know, like being number one and being famous, you don't have to be to win in this life. I'm going to tell you something. Now, I guess at the point now, yeah, like we go somewhere, you know, we see people that we know almost in every place that we go to. It's a cool thing. But I'm here to tell you, man, you don't really have to step into the light to, you know, make five, ten, twenty thousand dollars a month. You know, it, how amazing would it be for you to be able to go anywhere in the world and have fun and enjoy life, spend money and not be bombarded like a Michael Jackson, like a Elvis Presley or whatever the case may be. So understand that aspect of it too, guys. Like, so the money, the money, the money, the money, it will come, but don't make that your main focus. What do you, what is, your, money comes faster, write this down. Money comes faster to the man or the woman who has a use for it. Money will come so fast to you when you have a use for it, you say, well, yeah, I want a Bentley. I got a use for it. I want a mansion. I got a use for it. But I'm here to tell you, once that's spent, right, what are you going to do with it? So when I say have a use for it, money tends to fly into the person who is not going to be the only beneficiary of it. When money, money is going to flow to you in such abundance when you're not the only beneficiary of it. Meaning when you use it to help more people, how do you help more people? If you're a real estate investor, you provide more housing. If you are a financier, you give out more funding. If you are a, uh, a musician, you play more music. It's, it's literally like a vehicle for you to literally get to where you want to be in life, right? And help others get there too. All right. So, I wanted to just drop that quick nugget on you guys, man. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Wholesaling is hard if you haven't prepared your spirit for the place that you're going to take the body. You understand that? When you prepare your spirit for the place that you want your body to be taken to, then observe it along the way. You know, release everything that creates worry. Learn how to think or visualize the happy place. Is that Hawaii? Is that St. Lucia's? Is that, you know, Rome? Whatever, wherever, whatever that happy place is, when you find yourself stepping into the, the thing that makes you worry, immediately pull yourself out of that place and step into a new world that creates bliss. Now, this is something that I always have to do. You know, I have to continuously step into a world that creates bliss, right? But the repetitious nature of that, the repetitious nature of training your mind, creating a neurological pathway in your mind to when immediately when bullshit steps into your door or when you worry about something, pull your mind out of that situation, create a habit of going into a new world that takes you to a place of heavenly bliss. Release it all. Release it all. And you know what else that I do is rewrite it in your mind the way that you would have loved for it to happen. Recreate the event in your mind the way you would. If there's a childhood issue that you're going through, recreate that event in your mind.
mind's eye the way you would have preferred it to happen and never return back to that old way again. It's going to release something inside of your spirit that's going to give birth to a new you as if the old you never existed. You understand? It's going to unlock things in your life that gives birth to a new you that gets to start and start observing your life right now when you learn how to recreate or reimagine all disturbing events in your life. These are all things that I've learned over the years of studying and studying and studying and feeding my mind, learning how to think better and better and better. And when I think I got it, keep learning, keep growing. And when I think I got it, keep going, right? It's a it's a always ongoing cycle of once again perfection. Chiseling out, chiseling out, carving out the perfect version of you. If that bad event happened, then I know what good looks like. Every relationship I've been involved in. Some relationships you argue more than others. I hate arguing. I really like despise like confrontation. And so when you know that you don't like arguing, guess what? That means that you like peaceful situations. So now if you understand, I understood that I love peaceful situations because coming out of relationships that had a lot of arguing. So now I know what to look for. And you know what to establish in relationships. All right? If if I, you know, had a, 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 a certain aspect of business that didn't go good, I know what better looks like. So it's not that, you know, you're not... You know, you're going through these things. Oh, woe is me. The world is always doing this to me. It's not that. It's literally a reflection of you. But it's to take those bad events in your life. If you can learn how to take those bad events in your life and learn from those events and immediately move past those events, whatever they may be, I promise you, you step into a world, a new reality for yourself that begins to unlock more doors. See, a lot of times you can see that people are going through bullshit in their life because they wear it on their face. So some people ask me sometimes, why are you always so happy? Or do you always, you know, uh, are you always this happy? I would say pretty much most of the time that I am because I choose to be. I choose to be in an abundant place in my mindset. I choose to be in a happy place in my mindset. I choose to be in a in a amazing place in my mindset because I love what I attract when I'm in that frequency or in that vibration. If you wear a frown on your face and you walk out, it's hard for me to frown, but if you wear a frown on your face and everything's always bad and, you know, and people can see that, oh, if, if, if you are a friend of mine and I call you, and every time I call you, how many, how many friends y'all got like this? And every time you call that person, they got bad news. Guess what? That shit is weighing on you more than it is them. They're sharing that frequency to you so that you can now step into that world with them. So one big thing that I do, you know, is I'm not the shoulder to cry on about your problems. You can label them out, but present them to me. So that we can step into the frequency of the solution. If you continually talk about your problems, you're giving life. Your words are life. Every time you post about your problems, you're giving life to that situation. You're giving life to that frequency. You're making the world observe it with you. You got to learn how to see the side of life that you want to see and give that attention. That doesn't mean that the bad did not happen. That's just saying, I choose. I have these set of affirmations that I, that I have. And it's called, I choose. I give that to my mastermind group, the HarrisMastermind.com. Um, they're on those aff set of affirmations now. But I choose. I choose perfection. I choose greatness. I choose success. I choose to be the one. I choose to be the best of the best. I choose. When you do these affirmations and you step into this world and you start affirming the life that you want in your life, I'm telling you, you begin to create worlds upon worlds that help you win in life. 
If you are sporadically, if you're getting sporadic results in business, relationships, and life, etc., and you don't know why, it's because you're not definite enough. You're not definite in your instructions to your world. Do you understand that in scripture it talks about, like, I'm not the, the biggest Bible thumper, right? I cuss, I do a lot of shit, right? But in scripture it tells us that, you know, our words have life. Life and death are in the power of a tongue. So when I understand that if I can sculpt my life, we've been given, the scripture tells us we've been given dominion over this world. That means that anything in this world, I have the ability to command it to be that and it's that. You get what I'm saying? So if I'm doing that with great intentions, good intentions, loving intentions to affect myself, which is going to also affect others, then I got to understand that I have to become more definite in the words that I internally speak. It's more than just the words that you verbalize, by the way. Your internal word, your internal conversations, your internal conversations. That's why scripture tells us that if you think of the act or sin, you've already committed the sin. This isn't a bad or good thing to make you like, oh shit, I've been thinking about that shit. Shit, who does it, right? But what I'm saying is, if you think of the act, it's already committed. That means this. If I think of anything in a good way, it's going to manifest. I'm going to, and I'm standing on that. So now when I wake up in the day, I meditate and I visualize. What I'm doing is I'm commanding the day. What I first do is I go, I wake up, boom, get my water. And then I go back to a nice, you know, soft sleep and I visualize myself laying in my bed at the end of my day at the end of my day being so happy and thankful in that moment right now at the end of my day in that moment of how amazing the day went man this was the best day ever Oh, I'm so thankful for this day. I met so many amazing people. Uh, my business did explosively well. Had amazing profits come in today. You know, my customers were extremely happy. You know, my family is happy. My family had fun today. You know, everything went great. And I visualized that. And I go to the end of that day. <laughs> and then I come back into the now. I open my eyes, come back into the now. And then... I visualize maybe future days or future events or future goals and dreams that I have. I do a couple other things that, you know, I teach as well, but that's what I want you to do. Prepare your day. Now, here's the thing. When you come back into yourself in the morning, so when you visualize the end of the day being so happy and thankful that the day went amazing and you step back into the version of yourself now of being in the morning, what I want you to do is wake up, put those two feet on the ground out of the bed and say, thank you and observe. Walk into your day and observe. Step into your day and observe. When you start to step into your day as an observer through these windows, when you start to step into your day as a, as a, a person who doesn't feel the need to have to make stuff happen on the grind is what they call it. Grinding is for people who don't think. If you are grinding in this life, you're not thinking. It's not about grinding, right? It's about working smarter. Spend the, him, I'll leave you with this. Spend the minimum amount of time doing what you love so that you can have the maximum amount of time doing what you love. Spend the minimum amount of time working with focus, laser focus effort, talk about food in another video. Food, I'm going to leave you with this. Food is a huge, huge, huge factor in you being able to think and have laser focus. If you are not fueling your body with the adequate amount of water, adequate amount of water, half your, half your, um, your, your um, body weight, in ounces. So if you weigh 300 pounds, you need to drink 150 ounces of water minimum. But in the heat, you probably need to drink a little bit more. If you weigh uh, 200 pounds, you need to drink 100 um, um, ounces of water a day. Fuel and then powerful green foods in the morning. The first thing you put in your body, powerful green foods. It's going to ignite you better than coffee.
water, and powerful green foods. Talk to them about the grind. Talk to them about the grind. I ain't messing with you, Crystal. <laughs> so powerful green foods in the morning, maybe one at lunch, maybe one in the evening. If you start to fuel your day, what do you want me to say about the grind, Crystal? Like the grind is the grind. The grind, if you're working harder with your behind, um, then you're not working you know, with your mind. What you say? You're working hard with your mind. You're not using your, uh, your behind. You're not using your mind. So, and here's the thing. I'm learning that this is my mindset is the way it is because I've never had to physically, you know, work a job for long extended periods of time. So I only know how to get it for myself. So when I talk to people, I talk to people as if they are already in the version of themselves that they have aspired or claimed to be or wanted to be. I speak to them as if they already know. So sometimes if they're still in that version of themselves that isn't an entrepreneur full time, they don't really understand or comprehend what I'm saying per se. So if you guys can you know, when you do consult with me or, or, or you hire me as a uh, as a, um, a mentor or a client or to be your consultant, it would be great to let me know the current version of you, how you think now. What do you think about working? Do you love working? You know, a lot of people say no, but, you know, I love doing what I do. This isn't work to me. Like, this is what I do. And, th and this, of course, may seem like work to somebody else who doesn't love this. So what do you love doing? You know, find that out. I love helping people. I love speaking to people. I love teaching people. Um, I love internet marketing stuff. I love reading. I love traveling, learning new places, things. So I love all those things. All those things help me become a better thinker. So find out what you love. Maybe do this for homework tonight. Write out what you love. What is it that you really love? It could be whatever. It could be whatever you want. And then, you know, maybe let's, let's talk about if you, you know, hire me as a mentor, let's talk about, you know, how we can capitalize or turn that into, you know, cash. You know, how can we turn your passion into cash? How can we turn your passion into cash? And if we can do that, you know, we can do that in many ways. But write down what you love, guys and ladies. And I think that's the first start. <clears throat> One thing that I also want you to do is start dreaming. Like, what is it? What is your dream car? <clears throat> You know, what would you do, you know, if I dropped $100,000 in your hand and showed you how to get it? If you made $100,000 with me on any type of business, what would you do? I have people that I've helped do that many times over, and they probably don't even recognize the lifestyle that they're living right now. You know, the old lifestyle. They don't, they, they're not, they don't resonate with it anymore. It's not even, you know, a part of their reality anymore that they used to make it off what they used to make it off of. You know, and... So the fact that I've helped so many people do this and they forget about their old lifestyle, I'm telling you, I want to help you forget what poverty looks like. I want to help you forget what I'll tell you one thing that, that one of my friends pointed out to me is when I go to a, uh, a restaurant, <clears throat> I learned this from my, one of my first mentors. <clears throat> when I go to a restaurant, I, uh, okay, I'll answer your question, Kyle, in just a second. When I go to a restaurant, I don't look at the prices. I look at what I want to eat. Now, I didn't know that I did that, meaning like I don't think about it anymore. But my, my friend, they noticed that I don't look at the prices and make my decision. What do I want to eat on this menu? And then I place my order. And whoever I'm with, I tell them to place their order. And so understanding that, oh my God, you know, I want to say this in the right way. I remember being taught this. I remember thinking like, oh my God, thank for telling me this because I was about to step into a world around people who are conscious about the price more than what they want. So I'm saying that to say, what do you want? What is it that you want? Another thing is, I don't complain about gas prices. You know, one of my friends like, you know, I fill up every time I go fill up. Somebody said, yeah, that's because you got money. But I did that when I didn't have what I have because I'm going to have to fill up anyway. Why the fuck would I drive, 
20 miles out of the way to go save 10 cents. If you really do the math, if you really do the math, you realize that you spend more driving 20 miles out of the way than you would have just getting your gas at the place that's charged you a little bit more. So it's, it's these things that, you know, if you don't know what you want, how the world how in the world can you get it man like you can't get what you don't know you want so write that out tonight what do you love doing what do you want the money for what do you want this hundred thousand dollars for that your boy b can can help you get you know a month a year a quarter or whatever the case may be talk to him b provide quality and value do good business and the profits will follow that's it kyle uh, so guys, I hope you had an amazing experience listening to this. Check out the wholesalersblueprint.com. Um, if you want more mental uh, mindset training uh, for a dollar a day, you can go to the harrismastermind.com. We've got a series of uh, videos that we've been doing since January um, that you can go back and start watching and catch up. And also amazing business opportunities that you guys can learn how to do very uh, small ventures that you can kind of get your feet wet, learn how to build uh, uh, systems to make more money flow to you. One thing that I taught the mastermind is how to create you know, your various merchants accounts so that you can make it easier for money to go to you. See, if I can't get money to you and you're offering a service and I have to meet you cash, you're going to automatically lose my business. So like if I can't pay you through an electronic medium to get money to you and you post about something that I'm interested in, then it's like I'm not going to do business with you. And that's really the majority of people. So you got to make it easy for you know, people to put money in your hand, put money in your account. And so how do you do that? I teach all of that in the ma in the HarrisMastermind.com. The WholesalersBlueprint.com is more so about, you know, mindset and various ways to, you know, get real estate uh, with uh, no money out of pocket to acquire the property. Now, you may have to spend money on marketing. You may have to spend money on signs, you know, different things like that. But you don't have to spend money to actually purchase the property or fix it up. You can sell that property for profit without having to put up any of your own money. And I've done well over a few thousand deals, um, you know, in a short time frame. Some deals I've only made $500 off of. Some deals I've made over $150,000 off of. It just really depends on the deal, the area, the house. And, you know, it all started with a dream. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazines, salt and pepper and heavy D up in the limousine, paint pictures on the wall. <clears throat> and so that's your boy B, man. So I hope you guys enjoyed this session. Share this video with others. <clears throat> that may be interested in learning how to wholesale, they can go to the wholesalersblueprint.com, the harrismastermind.com, and I'll also be posting a consultant link for those of you that, that would be interested in getting more consulting, you know, more one-on-one -on -one consulting, not more, not group consulting. And also check out omnipresentagency.com. If you need to, you know, market your business or you want to, you know, dabble into marketing, uh, check out omnipresentagency.com. Uh, absolutely amazing company and has helped a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, build a brand. Uh, and that's the key to marketing. I want you to understand that the key to marketing is you don't try marketing. <clears throat> you know, you, you have people say, I tried it and it didn't work. You know, I tried to market and it didn't work. You don't try marketing. If you're in business, marketing should be a cost just like gas is for your car. You got to spend money on marketing. You, if you're making, you know, three, four, five, thousand dollars a month you know you may allocate 10 percent of that to marketing or 15 percent of that to marketing man like if you're making you know 10 twenty thousand dollars a month you really need to be chalking away at five thousand dollars a month in marketing man like this has to be and so here's the thing you don't try it that's a brand you should have a marketing campaign for at least five or ten years a campaign that un consistently unfolds so this is how you you know apply marketing it's not a month thing. It's not a two-month thing. It's not a 90-day thing. It is literally a lifetime thing for as long as you plan on being in business for yourself. And so when you understand that, you'll learn how to always fuel your dream. That's fuel for your vision to keep growing. And so if you have to, if, you, if you're working a job, I mean, if, you, if you're an entrepreneur and shit happens, you have to go back and get a job. There's nothing wrong with it. You're in a mindset to where this job is just a boost. It's temporary. So stay in that mindset and then use that job 
trade your time for money so that you can fund your dream. You understand? That's what a job is for. A job was never meant to be a long-term thing. It was meant to be a short-term. The way they described jobs back in the 1700s and the 1800s was it was like trade work. It was, you know, I have a job for today. Uh, or I cut a yard for the day. I put horses on shoes for the day. It's a job. It's it, you get what I'm saying. It's not a career. That's a difference. And so you got to understand that a lot of a lot of uh, people in our society are looking at these jobs as careers, and they were never meant to be careers. They were only meant to be temporary fixes until you woke up to learn how to think, so that you can start manifesting your own dream. It's funding. You are trading your time in exchange for money and you take the money not to survive but to fund your future dreams guys it's your boy b you guys have an absolutely amazing day share this video with others that you think this may help and i love each and every one of you guys thank you so much for all of the years of following i remember when i didn't have any followers and i was posting relentlessly and i would only get like one view one like and so now we have thousands of people that follow us on all of our mediums and i really appreciate each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart uh, to the depths of my soul for, you know, uh, showing us love always and uh, getting nuggets. And I'm I'm praying and I believe it is it's having a ripple is having a ripple effect, not only on those of you that are viewing, but I feel that many of you are sharing this with your family, sharing this with your children. You know, showing them this information so that you guys can, you know, make sure that other people win. So I may only see you on these videos. I may only see you on these videos. But at least, at least, um, I know that you guys are sharing it. Guys, have an absolutely amazing day. I'll talk to you guys later.